go ahead and pray together, all right? So if you'd like to go ahead and stand, we'll pray. And we remain standing as people come on in and we pray the Lord for you all. All right, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for the morning that you've given us to come together to praise you, to worship you, Lord, through the different aspects of worship as we uh, meet, as we pray, as we sing, as we study your word, uh, as we give financially, um, and we give ourselves. And we just pray that for those of us that are here and those of us that are coming, that you would just fill us with the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And we have so much in you to be thankful for. This world's an ugly place, and uh, that's why we need Jesus. So just come and, again, fill us today. And thank you for each and every one that's here and what you are going to do this morning. What you're going to show, what you're going to teach this morning. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
just thank you for your presence here. We just ask that you would just be real among us this morning. So I see your love through your word. Be with Mark as he brings home his stage to the teachers in Sunday school. They're with the kids. As we encounter you this morning, just transform us, renew us, heal us.
Husbands, love your wives. Wives, love your husbands. And parents, love your kids. kids. Yeah, let's get rid of those rules. Well, the, the kids have kind of got it. But, um, no. It's, it's all good stuff when you really take a look at it. So we can do good godly things he planned for us long ago. So we said, as we said a couple weeks ago, this verse tells us two things. Number one, you are God's masterpiece. Well, yeah, but, you know, I, I've got curly hair, I always wanted straight hair. And I've got straight hair, I always wanted curly Guys, it is not the truth. Ladies, is that the truth with, with some of you? You you were you're born when I say, where's my sister? Where's Ruth? Oh, oh, she is in here. Hi, Ruthie. Okay. I, I guess I won't talk about that one. Um, <laughs> no, Ruth was born with naturally curly hair. You see, it's pretty wavy. Everybody look at her. Look at her. Turn around. Don't look at me. No. Okay. Okay, you keep looking at her now. Okay. Um, and so, like, as a teenager, um, female teenager, oh, yeah, tough time, right? Um, so she would, like, she would put tape on her face to, to try to get her, her hair straight. Ruth, did you ever iron your hair? No. No? Okay. Okay. But, so, she had curly hair and she wanted straight hair. And so those of us that want straight hair, then we do what? We go and get perms, right? Becky, uh, she, you know, she always wanted to get a perm. I want to tell you, you kind of look like... <laughs> okay. I, I don't know that I was going to go there, but, yeah, she... I, I told her she looked like Big Bird, you know, because it's just so frizzy. You know, and I mean, she's cute. Never mind. Okay. Um, so you are God's masterpiece. And second, God has a masterful plan for you. It may not be easy, but it's a masterful, masterful plan. And the, the third thing is, is you know, we all need to know this, that God loves you. Okay? God loves you. Yeah, but you don't know what I've done. No, I don't. God does. And you know what? He still loves you. Yes, He does. He does. And He wants you so that you can go ahead and feel like through accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior and, and having a relationship with Him through prayer and through God's Word so you can feel like the masterpiece God wants you to feel like. Because if you don't feel like God's masterpiece, and it is hard for me to say that, if I were to say, yeah, I'm God's masterpiece, I'd be like, dude, no, I, I'm not. I don't feel good enough to be that. But, so that's my issue. And we need to know that we need to be able to say, I am God's masterpiece. And so if God made me tall, short, whatever, that I am the way I am because God made me that way. And he loves me. But the sad thing about all this is, is that we are the ones who derail God's master plans for us. My, my grandma, my mom's mom, was called to be a missionary as a young gal, and she didn't want to be a missionary. And I think, oh, how many people missed out on God's blessing because grandma said no to God. And instead, she was married five times, trying to fill that void, I think, that she was missing because she was not doing God's will. And she knew that. We are the ones that derail it. Our choices determine how well we fulfill this plan. Now, the book of Philemon was written around 61, 63 AD uh, from the Apostle Paul that was in a Roman prison. It was written to a man named Philemon, and Philemon means friendly. And Paul called him a much-loved co-worker. The church met in his home. He loved his fellow believers. Philemon was a generous man. He was kind. He was hospitable. He was just your basically all-around good guy. And he owned a, name, a slave named Onesimus. Onesimus had stolen from Philemon and had run away. And he ended up in Rome. And he met Paul while Paul was in jail. And there Onesimus then became a believer. Paul led him to the Lord. In fact, usually, you know, when, when Paul was in jail, he would lead guys to the Lord. And you know, I'm sure that, I know if it was me, I'd be like, oh God, why am I in jail? 
But hopefully, I wouldn't think that way. Hopefully, if I was, I'd be thinking, okay, hey, you know what? I'm here, so these guys don't know about the Lord, so I need to tell them about Jesus. Because wherever we are, God wants us to be the light, share the light and life of Jesus to a dark and dying world. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So Onesimus has a problem. That's his past. So what should he do? Should he go back to Philemon, or should he just go ahead and cruise on? Well, next on your outline is we see that our past either paves the way to usefulness in the future, or our spirits often become a prisoner of the past. And isn't that so true? And how many of us are sitting here feeling like we're a, a, a prisoner to a certain degree because we have not, I don't want to say we have not been able to give up, but we have made the choice not to give up the stuff that God wants to take from us. Because he wants to take the trash. He doesn't, he doesn't want any trash in our lives. He wants to take it out. So the first step in making ourselves useful is to make peace with the past. Make peace with the past. So, Philemon, the scriptures are, the verses are printed for you there. Philemon, this letter is from Paul, a prisoner for preaching the good news about Christ Jesus. And from our brother Timothy, I'm writing to Philemon, our beloved co-worker. I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon, because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. That's why I am boldly asking a favor of you. I could demand it in the name of Christ because it's the right thing for you to do, but because of the love that we share, because of our love, I prefer simply to ask you. So consider this as a request from me. Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. I appeal to you to show kindness to my child Onesimus. I became his father in the faith while here in prison. Onesimus hasn't been of much use to you in the past, but now he is very useful to both of us. I'm sending him back to you, and with him comes my own heart. He is no longer like a slave to you. He is more than a slave, for he is a beloved brother, especially to me. Now he will mean much more to you, both as a slave, as a man, and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. And if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to me. So this letter tells us a few things. Number one, Onesimus didn't deny his past. He could have just not said anything to Paul. But evidently, he confessed, he, yeah, this is what I'm doing, and, or this is what I've done. Okay? And on your outline there, we know that denial is pretending there's no problem. Denial of our past pain and denial of our past problems, it's the most unhealthy response that we can have. It prevents real emotional, relational, and spiritual healing. You know, we can deny our, our anger, no, no, I'm not mad. But really? <laughs> we can deny our pain, well, it, it's not that bad. We can, you know, we can deny, uh, well, I've got cancer, but no, 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 I, no, I, I deny, you know, I, I don't have cancer, I'm fine, I'm, I'm healthy. And we can deny all that stuff that's in us and not deal with it, but then it leads to what? A dead end. A dead end. The second thing that it's, it's important to understand is he wasn't poisoned by his past. He wasn't poisoned by his past. See, our past offers us four optional responses. And if you've been in church for a while, you've probably heard of some of these before as well. That our, our first response to our problems or our pain, or a response, is we can curse it. <clears throat> Just curse that thing. You know, it's unhealthy because um, the key word here, it's unhealthy, excuse me. The key word here is poison. That's what it is. If we curse our past or curse our problems, it poisons us. It's getting mad at ourselves, getting mad at our circumstances. Um, it's something. We just, oh, we shake an angry fist. We shake an angry fist at God, asking, where were you when? 
Joey, I'd like to show the video, uh, Luke, in about a minute. We can be mad at God, and on and on it goes. In the book of Hebrews, the author tells us how we should respond to pain and problems in our lives. Hebrews 12 says, work at living at peace with everyone, and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy, boy, will not see the Lord. Okay, it's going to be a couple more. Look after each other. Why? So that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. So that you're still hanging with God and you can experience God's grace. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you. Because when it does, it's corrupting how many? It's corrupting many, right? Yes. What he is saying to us is, how do we prevent growing bitter over past problems and pain, and how do we promote healing? Two simple ways. Number one, he says, to make every effort to live in peace on your outline there. Instead of being angry at something or someone, choose the path that leads to peace. And the second thing is, make every effort. Okay, so time out. Isn't it great? Football's in again. Oh, Sundays. Yeah, Sundays. How many of you love it? Okay, how many of you could care less? Okay, that's great. <laughs> um, anyway, so, okay, so anyway, so, so time out here. Make, how much, how much effort? Every effort that you don't leave one stone unturned. Is that the right way to say that? Yeah, don't leave every stone unturned. Make every effort to be holy or to be different from the world by living out God's word. But verse 14, that's kind of tough. Work at living at peace with everybody. And work this. That is a four-letter word because it is work to live at peace, right? Sometimes within our own homes, it's work to, to live at peace. Um, and work at living a what? A holy life. A life that's set apart from sin. A life that says... When Satan says, hey, come here, hey, I saw what they did to you. You, you have every right just to lower the boom, man. Yeah, go for it. And the Holy Spirit says, that's a personal foul if you listen to that guy. No, I, don't know. I want you to be patient with that person. That word patience means long suffering. There's a reason why patience means long suffering sometimes, right? Yeah. And I wish I could say, I wish you could go to my kids, my, my family, and say, hey, is your dad patient all the time? I don't know. Sorry. Nah. I want to be. God tells us through the author that if we do these two things, then that's our part. And what it does then is it opens the door of opportunities. For God's healing grace in our lives, so we're not poisoned anymore by the past. Yeah, I just think of Larry Hookman, counselor, and he does the counseling for us. Uh, and he would say, I know I've said this before here, that when he was a counselor here at AG, the kid comes into his office, and uh, one of the first things he would ask is, How's everything going with your dad? And how's everything going with your mom? How's everything going? Just see, when we have issues with our folks, at, at times that was well, not healthy for us, and at times that we carry that on. And they might be dead and gone now, but we can write a letter and just, okay, God, I'm putting my feelings out on this letter, uh, or just tell God, because it's not like God's going to say, really? I didn't know that you were that. They did that to you? I didn't know that. Well, yeah. God knows. So tell them. It's good to just let it out, right? Like frozen, let it go. Let it go. It's, 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 good, it's good to do that. If we remain resentful, it says that there will be a root of bitterness that will grow in us that will cause trouble. On your outline there, cause trouble, and it will defile and pollute everyone around us. Bitterness is never benign. Okay? It is always cancerous. It's always deadly. And if we don't remove it, 
the tumor will grow and death will continue to occur in more and more areas. Okay, are we ready to show it? All right. Uh, I want to show a clip from Joyce Meyer um, in the area of Don't get mad at God because he hasn't given you a soft, cushy, comfortable, sweet life. Now sometimes too, I want to talk about this for a minute. Sometimes when we're having trouble, we kind of get offended at other people who are being blessed. And we can even get a little self-righteous attitude. Well, I'm better Christian than you are. I mean, I, I do this and that. You do blah, blah, blah. You know? Self-righteousness is a sneaky, wicked thing. I actually had to repent twice in the last two weeks for being self-righteous. And I just thank God for his conviction, but it was, it was over a situation that somebody that I know sinned, and it was a pretty serious thing. And man... I had to sit on myself to not just keep thinking, well, I just can't, you believe, I just can't believe that. I mean, I would never, I would never, I would never. And boy, that's when you got to back off and say, but for the grace of God, there go I. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't deal with things in people's lives and help them come through to repentance and restoration, but we, we dare not start thinking that we're better than somebody else and are, are like in this case of, well, why, are, why am I having trouble and you're not? You just need to leave all that alone. Let me ask you a question. How do you behave when God doesn't pick you? You wanted to be the worship leader, and you didn't even get picked as a backup singer. <laughs> Matter of fact, they had the audacity to ask you if you'd like to make sure all the worship people have water. Wow. Well, that's a test, isn't it? So you can do what? Get offended. Get self-righteous. Really hurt yourself spiritually. Or you can trust God. If this is where you want me right now, God, I'm going to serve with a smile on my face. And I know if you want to put me somewhere else, you're the only one that can do it in the right time. Let's think about a few situations in the Bible that just amaze me. You know, God made a covenant with a man named Noah. Noah built the ark, did everything that God asked him to do. When the earth flooded and it was time for Noah to come out of the ark, God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you. This will never happen again. The earth, the, earth, the whole earth will never be destroyed again with a flood. And I'm going to set this rainbow, this beautiful rainbow in the sky as a promise to you that every time it rains, you see that rainbow and you know, no need to worry. God's not going to destroy the earth. Well, Abraham, a few chapters later, he's a man who makes a covenant with God. God said, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to make you wealthy and you're going to have land and blah, blah, blah. And this is what I want you to do is your part. Go circumcise yourself. Now, I don't know about you, but when I get circumcision and somebody else gets rainbows, I'm not real happy about it. <laughs> I mean, I just say it, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you what. I don't misunderstand this, but God hasn't been just real easy on me. I mean, I don't just get a bunch of like miracle deliverances. No, not me. I have to walk them out. And I used to just aggravate me because I would see all these other people. Well, you know. and, but I understand fully now why God made me walk the path that he made me walk. Because he wants me to really understand and relate experientially to what people are going through. So I can give them hope in their battles that they'll make So listen to me, sometimes God will let you go through something that doesn't make any sense at all to you 
expressly for the purpose of using you in that area to bring other people through to freedom at a later time in your life. There's a lot of stuff in the world that I don't understand, but I do. I've made my mind up to this. God is good, and I trust Him. God is good, and I'm going to trust Him. Amen? Another example in the Bible.
And even though the youth group had grown from 40 to over 600 teenagers, um, whatever I did was not good enough. Even though when I first had come back, after being gone for seven years, I had to have the police there, and I had to have some of the dads walk the campus because of um, the gangs that were there, because it was a place uh, where the kids would do drug deals, and you would um, maybe having sex outside, and so, I tend to be more of a disciplinarian kind of person. And so it's like, no, this stuff's not, not going to happen. And uh, so it was a tough time for the first year and a half dealing with the teens. But then the last two years dealing with mainly Pastor Ron's associate. And um, as a result of that, came on uh, why. Well, Depression, but uh, panic attacks and all that sort of stuff to where um, I didn't even drive for a month. Um, but nobody knew because I was so ashamed of that. And I just felt people would see me as weak and uh, I would not be able to have an influence in anybody's life. Um, and of course, there's a lot more to the story, but I'm not going to take the time. You get the gist of what, what happened. And God has used that in dealing with, working with other pastors, their associates, to be an encouragement. You know, don't be such a jerk to your staff, you know, or, or however nice I can say it. Um, or, especially the people that have anxiety, panic attacks. And... Um, I've shared with a few people um, to where then they just got up and they hugged me and they just said, you know what I'm going through. I said, yeah. And am I glad I went through that? No. For my own self, I'm still not glad. But for the, and be honest, but for the work of God, I am glad. Because that's, so I use that as a platform of helping others to where, hey, okay, yeah, I've gone through this. Do I think suicide? Yeah, of course I thought suicide. Was I going to do it? Well, no, of course not. Um, why would I, not, you know, but those thoughts, they come, right? How many of us have ever had a thought that, I, why am I even here? God, just take me home or I should just end it now. Yeah. Most of us, if not all of us. And thank God none of us have embraced those thoughts. And I'm taking a hump and all that. No, that's stupid. Because it is. It is because that's the enemy. See, God has a masterful plan for us. And my desire, you know, I, when I was praying for the last, whatever, six months there at, at New Life, God, just get me out of being a pastor. I don't want to be a pastor. God, get me a job at, at a bank. But then I... I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to have any job. I was not worthy enough to be married to Becky. I, and then we found out we were pregnant with our first child after being married for over 18 years. And I just felt like I'm not worthy enough to be the dad of this kid. You know? But see, but that was the lie. The truth is, God has a masterful plan for me. And he loves me. And through it all, I would say, God, I know this is not your will that I be treated this way, but it is the way I mean. So God, you need to help me in, in dealing with this. And I learned too, not to curse them, but that I needed to pray blessings on them. And that was tough. God, bless Pastor Ron and his associate. Because we think of blessings as you know, giving them a lot of money or giving them good help or whatever. But when we pray, pray for a blessing for somebody, it's always God. Give them what's going to help them the best. So I, I always pray God's blessing upon us, upon my family, you. Because I want what is going to be what's best in carrying out God's will. But that's not easy, Right? I know some of you are thinking, well, quit praying that way, Pastor. <laughs> Would you just pray? <laughs> yeah, I know. Sometimes I feel that way as well. But he has, he has a, a great plan for us. Again, it wasn't God's will that they treat me that way. But like Romans 28, 28 
says, that's somewhere on your outline, that God's going to use whatever we've gone through to help somebody else, to be useful for somebody else. I don't want what I've gone through to be useless. I want it to be useful. Otherwise, it's a waste, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a waste. So, what did Onesimus do? Number one, he made peace with God. It could mean getting over resentment that we have towards God, whatever it might be. And the verses, I don't think I printed them out for you because I have a lot of verses there. But John 16, 33, Romans 5, James 1, 1 Peter. So John, Paul, George, I know. John, Paul, in Romans, James, half-brother of Jesus, Peter, they all wrote that we are going to have problems in life. Jesus said it. We need to know that hard times are screened by God. They're screened by God. But 1 Corinthians 10, 13, he says, you know what? Trials are going to come your way, but with those trials, I will make a way out. You keep your eyes on me. But when we don't keep our eyes on him, then we keep getting into more trouble, more trouble. We're staying in the pit. We're in that grave. But thank God you guys are here because you understand it's not healthy to stay in the grave because the grave just ends in death. But you're here because you're like, hey, we climbed out of that. We climbed out of that. The trials in our life will not destroy us unless we choose to let them. Because, again, we have the power, right? Yeah. The trials in our life will not destroy us unless we choose to let them. I couldn't let what I went through destroy me, but I chose not to. People were praying, my wife, people were praying for me. We need to understand that God will use hard times for ultimate good in our lives. It's not always easy to accept, but it's true. Right? God will use hard times for ultimate good in our lives. It's not always easy, but it's true. But, um, when Pastor Ron and I, we were at a pastor's prayer time up in Creston, and we had talked about it. I said, hey, is that all right if I share some of our stuff with these guys? Yeah, sure. Okay. And again, then, then he said, Mark, any time, any time, brother. And so I did, and a couple of pastors said, do you guys go around and do seminars on this thing? We need you and Ron to come and, and talk how you guys got through it so that we can get through it with our guys. Well, how do you get through it? You just follow the Holy Spirit. You just are nice to one another. You talk stuff out. That's how. And you listen. Next thing is we must go to God for forgiveness. Too many times we run away. You know, we think we can hide from God. It's like the little kid to where it's like, you know, okay, where's, where's Mila? Where's Mila? There she is. Where's Mila? There she is. <laughs> oh my word, that smile is priceless. Well, they think that because they go like this that you can't see them, right? Well, we think that way with God sometimes. Okay, I'm hiding from God. And I was like, okay, kid. <laughs> but we don't need to hide from God. Well, Onesimus, he didn't deny his past. He wasn't poisoned by his past. He went back. See, we are not free. He went back to Philemon. We are not free to choose whatever happens to us in life. We can't control anything, but we are free to choose how we respond to it. I think I have this on your outline because I love this comment by Hugh Downs. Is that on your outline? Yeah. A happy person is not a person who's happy because of a certain set of circumstances. Rather, a happy person has a certain set of attitudes. Boy, isn't that the truth? And the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians to always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. 
It's like, like the little league baseball player that man walks up to him and he says, hey kid, how you doing? And the kid says, oh, hey mister, well, we're down 18 to nothing. 18 to nothing? Wow. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, son, you know, but there's always next Saturday. And the kid said, oh, no, mister, you know, the game's not over. We're still just in the first inning. <laughs> yeah, see, with Jesus, there's always a new beginning. And at times, it might seem insurmountable. You know, I've been a Dodger fan all my life. And I've seen them ahead, you know, 11 to nothing, and then lose 12 to 11. So, I, anything can happen. I was dark haired until I was dark. So, in essence, he made peace with God, and in this last one, he made peace with others. He's going to go home and make peace with my neighbor. Proverbs 14 Fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Yeah. We've got to do the biblical right thing in order to pick up and fix the pieces of the past. We begin the healing journey. Last thing on your outline. We begin the healing journey by refusing to live in denial, by refusing to curse it, to nurse it, or rehearse it, but instead we choose to reverse it by making peace with God, making peace with ourselves, and by making peace with others. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for what you taught us today through this short story. And God, I just, I just pray for any of us who have gone through stuff, which I would think is probably maybe a hundred percent, if not more, of us that are here, that we've gone through stuff in life, and we hurt. And, and what I'd like to do, uh, everybody here, if, if there's anybody here that you just need some prayer, I just want you to stand up where you are, and just stay there, okay? So if it's like, oh man, I'm I need some direction, I need some healing for myself, or I'm standing in the gap for somebody else, I want you to go and just stand where you are, okay? Don't come up front, just stand where you are. And then, for those of you who are seated around, if you feel comfortable with this, I'd like you to go up to the person and just put your hand on their shoulder. Okay, just lay a hand on them. And we're just going to pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, it's great there's not enough people to go around to lay hands on, which is awesome because that means that we're saying, yeah, we need help. And those of us that are seated, well, maybe we don't feel comfortable, or maybe things are going well at this time. And that's good. That's good. But I just want to pray for those of us who are standing, have stood. We pray for healing for us or somebody else. That, first of all, the person that needs the healing would embrace the truth that they are God's masterpiece and God has a, a wonderful plan for their life to help other people. And that there would be an emotional healing that would take place. pray, God, for a, a relationship. Maybe it's parent-child, work, marriage, whatever it might be. Just a relationship with another person. Maybe you, God. That we would just lay it down. Lay our will and our way, our demands 
down and just say, okay, God, I feel like I'm the parent, so I have every right to whatever. But we just give it to you and say, God, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. Or I know what needs to be done, and God, I need help in doing it, whatever it might be. Just come. Come, Lord. Heal this relationship. Maybe it's a financial thing, a job. Or there's bills for the car, for the hospital, whatever it might be. Give it to you. Maybe thoughts. These thoughts of, I'm a loser. These whatever demonic thoughts that are not from you. Oh God, I just pray in the name of Jesus you would touch and heal our brains, touch and heal our minds, our thoughts, which control our emotions. And God, help us to get into your word so that when the thoughts come, we can know that you tell us in James, submit to you, give it to you, and Satan will flee. Whatever the situation is, we just pray for your healing touch, God. All these areas, other areas. Maybe there's an area of abuse. Thank you for the healing touch that you have brought me through. And I know that I haven't arrived. I still need you, and I still need your touch. And I pray you would continue to touch me, Lord. Touch us. Lord, in our journey with you, I know that you want us to be and to bring the light and life of Jesus to a dark and dying world. Whatever we're going through, may we use that as a platform to speak into other people's lives, or well, really, to allow you to speak through us to other people, other people's lives. In Jesus' name we pray.
Um, and as well, there's a sign up for donuts or apples. Uh, Danny brought some apples, and so they're organic. They're all healthy, John. We know the apples. Um, and then we have tomatoes and other stuff, uh, jalapenos outside. So whenever you see like fruit or veggie laying around, just take it, okay? <laughs> and if somebody laid it down there, like um, I had um, candies. Oh. <laughs> I had candy sitting over there because it's grandparents' day. If you're a grandparent, would you stand up? Stand up, 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 up if you can, if you're able. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, we need to see you. Well, we have some chocolate for you, and um, uh, we had a couple little mice got into the, the chocolates um, before the service, uh, but that's okay. Their Sunday school teachers enjoying them right now. Um, so, but anyway, over at that table is the, the list of great donuts or, or fruit um, and ladies' Bible study. Sounds like an incredible Bible study, right, wife? the video that he showed this morning was Joyce Myers and uh, we there are many of us who feel like she's our best friend because we sat with her for two or three hours every Tuesday night and got to know her better last year and so we decided we would do it it wasn't really her it was her videos but um, we decided we'd do it again this year and this is her newest book out called healing the soul of a woman I'm hoping most of you ladies got a uh, paper on it and you're responsible for getting your own book. There's a book and a study guide. And uh, Stephanie told me they were at Walmart. I don't know, I'm assuming she was Walmart Santa Maria. I know they're at the Parable. I got mine on Amazon. It's a wonderful time. Please sign up over there. Where, see that book over there that looks like this one? There's a sign-in sheet right there if you're interested so that I will put your phone number in there so you'll be getting all our texts of what we're doing, where we're going. So. Uh, at that paper says the 27th will be our first meeting, which is a Thursday, and it's gonna. The first one will be at our house, and we'll figure out what we're doing from there. So I'd love to have all you ladies join us. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, yeah, so check out that table. Check out the fruit, the donuts, any food laying around. Be, feel free to take it. Okay. All right. Because uh, see, I used to be so for size until I you know, started taking everybody's fruit. And food. And I don't need to Okay. Uh, so in here we have tithing envelopes and visitor cards of so your visiting. Uh, and I don't have your information. I would love to have your information. Um, so fill, fill that out. Okay, then drop it in the tithing offering basket. Yes? How much did we raise? How much did we raise? Uh, we're not sure yet, but it was at least over $11,000. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you helped at the uh, fundraiser last week, would you stand? If you helped serve or, or did whatever, set up. Hey, it was awesome. And I love hearing people say, this was fun tonight. You know, it's like, yeah, you got to be with me. Of course, this is going to get enough. I'm real humble as you go. Um, so, no, it was, it was an awesome time. So, thank you, Maria, for spearheading it. And everybody else that, that made it happen. Okay, anything else I need to announce or am I done? Okay, I think I've got But does anybody have a word that they would like to like to share? Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. Uh, I was going to say, uh, anybody who talked to me this week would have thought, anybody who talked to me this week would have thought that Mark and I had talked about his sermon today because it was such confirmation Everything that I have read and listened to and studied this week was just like, yeah, there you go. I didn't, we didn't even talk about it. I had no idea what he was talking about, even the words that he used. So it was very right. interesting, yeah. Wow. I know, you know, as I share it often, I, I get to live out the sermon that I preach on Sunday. And I just would love to be able to just preach on a lot of how life is easy every week. <laughs> uh, but no, talking about this stuff, uh, life really stinks a lot of times. Uh, but there's a beautiful side to it, but there's the other side, right? And, you know, regardless, I know that God's on the throne. I know where I'm going. I'm okay. And uh, so I, 
I don't want to use it as a pitfall. I'm going to use it as a platform. Right? Yes. Would everybody agree with that? Not the pitfall, but the platform, right? <laughs> right! Oh, all right. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and stand. And uh, Heavenly Father, just thank you. Thank you for what you taught us this morning. And give us a great day, an awesome week. And may we shine for you wherever we are. Bless the uh, activities uh, today and throughout the week on what's happening, Lord. And in all things, we give you the glory. And we pray this in Jesus' name that everybody said. Amen. 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 All right. And we have moved some of the tables and chairs around. So uh, we'll need to move some of those back, and if you're not sure, then that's fine.